All right, join us now here in New York, former Secretary of Homeland Security under President Obama, Jay Johnson. Mr. Secretary, good morning, good to see you. Willie, really, thanks for having me. We want to talk to you about the 18th anniversary of 9-11, where we are in terms of the country's security, but also want to get you in on some of the matters of the day, some of the news out there, including a conversation we were just having in our last segment about this Democratic presidential field. There's another debate tomorrow night. Yes. After the first debate <clears throat> in Miami, uh, back in July, you wrote a column in the Washington Post expressing yes. some frustration with what you saw on the stage that night around the conversation about immigration. Uh, and that included some of the candidates on stage saying it should not be a crime to come to this country right. illegally, um, that you should be allowed to stay. Um, what is your message to Democrats as they take the stage again tomorrow night on issues like immigration? Well, first of all, that Washington Post op-ed was probably version two. Uh, version one was a little more animated. Um, so what was your frustration? The, the, look, the, most Americans want to be fair and treat in a humane way those who have migrated here, who are desperate, who are fleeing really bad conditions. Uh, we want to take care of people who came here as children. Uh, we want to take care of the dreamers. Uh, but Americans also want secure borders. They want to get control of illegal migration. And that's true, I know, from Laredo, Texas to, to Detroit, Michigan. And so <clears throat> when we talk about deprioritizing uh, the deportation of those apprehended at the border or decriminalizing uh, illegal immigration, I know that we're, we're going way too far to the left of the American consensus on where we should be on this. And you just cannot have a policy where a Border Patrol agent arrests someone at the border and says, in effect, you get to stay here unless you commit a crime. Right. Uh, that just simply incentivizes more illegal immigration. We, we lose control of our borders. Uh, in the same vein, by, by taking a formal step of decriminalizing illegal migration, what we're saying as a country and as a society is we're prepared to see a lot more of this. When you decriminalize something, it's because society is prepared to see that behavior, perhaps regulated, but en masse. And I don't think that's where the American people are. And so I'm a Democrat. I'm a loyal Democrat. And I want to see us win in 2020. But to do that, we've got to appeal to the, the wide consensus out there on immigration and a lot of other issues. And by the way, this is no endorsement of the Trump administration's policies at the border. You're just warning Democrats not to go too far to the left. You've got a line near the end of your July Washington Post piece where you write, those who aspire to public office should not espouse campaign promises that have no prospect for success. This is a disservice to our democracy and assumes voters are fools. Who are you talking to there? Uh, everybody. <laughs> Every. <laughs> Every, every Democrat. Can, every, every Democrat, including Andrew Yang, who's apparently eight points ahead of Donald Trump. I think that's a really interesting poll. <laughs> Richard Haas, what do you make of <clears throat> Secretary Johnson's analysis of the Democratic field and immigration? Well, it's on immigration. It's also on taking you know, health care away, private health care, conceivably, from 175 uh, million Americans. You just have to resist the pull to the far left that would preclude you from ever, you know, this is, this at the end of the day is not a progressive country. This is a pretty moderate country. And uh, the question is, you know, can Democrats, because it's tension. Yeah. And so the, on, all, on all these issues, what about foreign policy? You don't see you know, national security. You may, there's a little bit of that in the immigration conversation. What about more broadly, uh, whether it's trade or on uh, quote unquote forever wars? What's your sense of the foreign policy conversation on the Democratic side? Does that, to what extent does that also make you uneasy? I think Americans expect their government to, whether it's homeland security or the military, to, to keep them safe, to do what's necessary to keep them safe. And while I was in office, uh, my goal, which I believe was supported by the American people, is keep us safe, but let's stay true to our values. Uh, preserve our civil liberties, but also preserve our physical security. And so, so much of what we do in national security, and you know this, Richard, is striking the right balance between preserving our values and preserving our, our physical safety. Elise? Um, Mr. Secretary, I mean, to follow the point, it seems as if, you know, the Democrats are, you know, focus a lot on the criticism of the president's policy without specifically presenting their own <clears throat> right. of ideas and not, you know, on the issue mm -hmm. of, of democracy and, and uh, foreign policy, not kind of acknowledging the changes that brought President Trump 
um, here in the United States and you know Brexit and Boris Johnson and all of these mm -hmm. you know populist movements sweeping through do you think Democrats um, are putting forward enough I mean I know you know we talked about Elizabeth Warren putting forward her mm -hmm. specific proposals um, but that they're caught too much in you know Trump should not be president Look, if, we talk, if we're talking about an affirmative position on national security, uh, take Afghanistan, for example. <clears throat> uh, I believe that rather than a, a true presence of, say, 100,000 or complete withdrawal, what the United States needs to do, at least for the time being, is to keep a force in place there at the levels that um, fairly guarantee that no other terrorist organization can reestablish a caliphate there. Uh, at least in the short term until um, there's a more stable government there, until the civil war between the Taliban and the Afghan government is somehow resolved. I think we have to continue some level of presence there to keep the American people safe. Um, I agree that um, when you're talking about a candidate for president, it should be America first, national, our national interests first. And one of the ways to do that is through alliances, and Jim Mattis talks about this a lot, through alliances, uh, ensure our safety around the world in places like Afghanistan, in places like Somalia, Yemen, Pakistan, uh, Iraq, and elsewhere. So that would mean, though, that you would oppose the candidates who are calling for unconditional calendar-based withdrawals from Afghanistan, because we're hearing that from a lot that of That is correct. Countries. I would oppose any such thing. I think we need to maintain some level of presence in Afghanistan uh, to ensure that al-Qaeda, the Islamic State, does not establish a caliphate there. Kind of like John Bolton's position. Let me, ha let me ask the both of you, and you, Secretary Johnson, to avoid fistfights, you go first, okay? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, would never. never. <laughs> it's September 11th, 2019. Mm. This country has been extremely yes. fortunate due to the diligence, the sacrifice, the hard work of many, many Americans on the front lines in the war on terror. Correct. Let's say France wired within Syria. There's a specific issue that could be explosive later today or tomorrow. So the national security director for Macron, who does he call here? Well, that's a good question. Um... There's been so much churn in this administration that I know we're now considering people uh, for jobs that were fired in round one. Uh, I saw Tom right. Bossert was on the list. Right. Recycling. Security, by right. Recycling. Right. Uh, Mark Morgan was fired in the early days of this administration. He's now at, uh, he's now at ICE. And so your question demonstrates the volatility of, of so much turnover in this administration. Uh, but on the question of 9-11, Mike, you know, we're, a lot of people ask me, are we safer today than we were 18 years ago? The answer is yes and no. Mm. We're safer in the respect that our government does a much better job of detecting and preventing large-scale foreign-directed terrorist attacks on the homeland. I can't tell you the number of uh, overseas plots that we stopped in their tracks over the last 18 years, there were countless, to keep the American people safe. Where we're challenged now are the smaller scale terrorist inspired attacks by the self radicalized actor, either by uh, something they see and read from a foreign terrorist organization or extreme right wing violent nationalism. People ask me, what's the answer? I say the first three answers are gun safety, gun safety, gun safety. Hmm. And we just have to address this. Uh, if Joe Manchin and Pat Toomey, uh, Republican and Democrat from West Virginia and Pennsylvania can can get together on this and these are two states with strong positions on the Second Amendment. If they can exercise the political courage to come together on this, the rest of the Congress ought to be able to do that. And I think that the time is now finally right for Congress to do something about gun safety. We have to address that as a matter of our public safety and our homeland security. And to your point about white supremacist violence, there's been an acknowledgment now, a public acknowledgment from the director of the FBI, Christopher Wray, in congressional testimony that the majority of the plots disrupted in the last year or so were domestic oriented Correct. and were from white supremacist violence. Is there finally right. now a change in posture, do you believe, from right intelligence wing, agencies? Right wing, violent nationalist uh, attacks now outpace um, attacks inspired by foreign terrorist organizations. Uh, the Anti-Defamation League and others have, have uh, tracked that. And 
look, whether it's foreign inspired, uh, domestic inspired, um, we have to address first and foremost for the safety of the American people. Um, the ability of a violent, deranged individual to get his hands on a gun, particularly an assault weapon in this country. And if we do not, uh, our leaders in Congress and in the White House are letting down the American people. This can't go on. Former Secretary of Homeland Security Jay Johnson, we always appreciate your insights, particularly on an anniversary of 9-11. Good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Mika? And still ahead, we'll talk to another member of the Obama foreign policy team, former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Samantha Power. And before we go to break, a look at the Pentagon just moments ago where the United States flag was unfurled ahead of today's 9-11 memorial service there. We're back in just a moment. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.